Welcome to the next in the series of expert guides for business from Towergate Insurance. We're at the Federation of Small Businesses to get some essential advice. Whether you're starting out or established, we'll find out all you need to know to get your business through the tough economic times. So what is the Federation of Small Businesses? What does it do? Why should people join? The Federation of Small Businesses was established back in 1974 and it was established to represent the interests of micro businesses and the self-employed who at that time didn't really have a voice in the business community. And today we've grown to uh, have over 200,000 members. We're the largest independent business group in Europe. Um, and we champion the causes of the small businesses, those that find it difficult uh, to make their views known, particularly with decision makers in Westminster. But crucially, we also provide a comprehensive package of services and benefits uh, that give small businesses a level playing field when they're out there competing with the big boys. Wherever you may encounter an issue or a problem as a small business, we like to think that the FSB has a service to help you solve that problem. Let's talk about VAT. It's high at the moment. What impact is that having on small businesses? Increasing VAT to 20% has had a negative impact on the majority of small businesses in this country. Uh, it's had three uh, uh, impacts, essentially. First of all, it has meant that the vast majority of businesses have had to pass on the costs of the increase in VAT which has made them less competitive opposite big, big, bigger businesses that have been able to absorb those costs. For those businesses that haven't been able to pass on those costs for whatever reason, they've seen their profit margins decrease even further. Uh, but then there's been the third factor which has meant that there's been a decrease in demand as prices have increased and consumers are finding it tough going in this current climate. Um, we're seeing a lot of businesses, particularly those dependent on discretionary spending, finding a decrease in demand. So if you've got, say, a builder and a small shop, or a greengrocer, which one should be VAT registered and which one shouldn't? Whether you're a plumber or you own a shop or you're a landscape gardener, it very much depends on the kind of people and the kind of organisations you are doing business with. If your customers and clients are VAT registered themselves, then there's a financial incentive for you to be VAT registered as well. But it's more than that, it's actually to do with the reputation of your business. Um, other businesses will more likely do business with you if you are VAT registered. It comes with a certain credibility attached to it. Um, however, when you're starting out and in those early days, it can be quite daunting to think that you have to deal with all of the paperwork associated with VAT. So the best advice that we could possibly give is that to get yourself an accountant, get advice from a tax advisor, an expert in this field, um, which will pay off in the long term. Well, this is it. That can be expensive, can't it? It might put people off. One of the best sources of advice for a small business is actually an accountant. Um, when we survey our membership, we ask them where do they go for advice, who do they trust, and at the very top of the list are accountants, um, because they find that the advice that they receive not only pays off, but it can actually save them money over the medium to long term. So if there's one thing to not cut off your list, it's the accountant. Definitely not. When you go into business, it's generally because you've got a good idea, you're excited about that and you want to drive it forward. It's not because you want to get bogged down uh, in, in tax forms and HR forms. So wherever possible, make sure that you bring the experts into your business and take their advice. And interest rates, of course, are at an all-time low. How is that affecting business? Well, low interest rates as they are at the moment should be a good thing for small businesses. Um, the opposite, if, if interest rates were to increase, as they will do sooner or later, that is going to increase the cost of borrowing. It's going to be making purchasing more difficult, um, but crucially it's also going to make it more difficult for uh, customers and consumers. Um, we would fear at this stage in the recovery that it would have a negative effect for demand, um, which is already quite low across a lot of sectors of the economy. And borrowing is the big problem, isn't it, for business? You can't get a mortgage like you could five years ago when it was quite easy to self-certificate. What advice would you give to businesses who need to rent premises? 
First and foremost, I think p a business needs to ask the question, do they really need premises? Um, particularly if you're in the process of starting up now, um, is it possible to work from home? Um, is it possible to trade online? In this day and age, every business that can possibly move uh, its trading online through eBay or through websites should do that because the overheads are so much lower. Um, and this is the first recession we've gone through where online trading has been in existence. So every business should be looking to push as much that way as possible. If you do need premises, there are a range of things you have to consider. Uh, buying a property can be a long-term investment, uh, but in the short term, it can be very costly and it can be very unpredictable. Uh, mortgage rates fluctuate, um, so if you're trying to have a business plan over the medium term, that can be very difficult. Renting, conversely, can bring much more predictability. Uh, uh, rents tend to be fixed, at least for a year or two years, um, but it's important to shop around and make sure that you get a deal that allows you to pay your rent monthly instead of quarterly. It's still only 12% of landlords will accept that rent being paid monthly. But with the economic climate as unpredictable as it is at the moment, it's important that you're not committed to paying large sums of money on a quarterly basis. So it, it must be quite hard to, to find the money up front to buy expensive stuff that you need to run your business. Particularly uh, at a time when banks are not wanting to lend and a lot of businesses have run down their savings to get through the recession, it can be very difficult to purchase uh, machinery, equipment and tools. Um, but there are other options and one of them is obviously to lease uh, um, machinery and tools uh, on, a, on a contract basis, which gives you more flexibility um, through the, the short to medium term. And that's a real uh, uh, advantage for businesses when the economic conditions are very unstable. It must be very difficult to balance what you're spending with what's coming in because there's, you need to buy in that expertise from the accountant but you might think, well, I can't really afford that because I want to invest in some marketing at the moment and there's not that much money coming in. It's very difficult. How do they go about balancing and managing that cash flow? That's the nature of doing business, unfortunately, and it's always an issue, even in the good times. Um, but when times are difficult as they are now, it's absolutely, absolutely important that you focus on the priorities. Um, you obviously need to get the right tax advice, but don't, don't do that to the exclusion of marketing your business. Uh, it, all the evidence suggests that marketing your business and promoting it is the best way to thrive during a downturn um, and to come through uh, the other side much stronger. And as businesses grow and move forward, they become bigger, you employ people. That can be very difficult for someone who hasn't got any experience of being an employer. What advice would you give to them about issues like HR? It's often the case that the perception of employing people is uh, more of a barrier than actually taking the plunge and taking on that first member of staff. And there are certain milestones. Taking on uh, a member of staff is extremely daunting, but there are lots of how-to guides around. There are templates offered through the FSB and also um, uh, free advice at the end of a telephone line um, to help you get the contract right. And then if you encounter any issues or problems further down the line, um, free advice to provide you with the, the support you need. Um, but then crucially, if you start to grow your business, you'll probably find that you get to between five and 10 employees and the burden of the uh, HR and employment law surrounding that becomes really uh, troublesome. And that's the point at which you do need to start looking to getting professional advice um, and HR advice uh, for your business. So finally, what are the main three things to keep in mind? Be forensic and ruthless in cutting your overheads. And if you can move uh, some of your business online, then do that. Secondly, ensure that you are building customer loyalty. Make sure that you give the customer the best possible service and you retain them. Thirdly, get the right advice from your tax expert, from marketing experts and from HR. Andrew, that's all really useful advice. Thank you very Pleasure. much for your time. Well, to find out more, you can find us on Facebook or Twitter or go to towergateinsurance.co.uk, which is packed with advice and top tips.